SUNY Old Westbury hosts an annual student research day each spring. Through oral, poster, media, and art presentations or exhibits, students showcase the results of their research and creativity. These academic and artistic achievements represent the effort of in-class assignments and out-of-class experiences conducted with faculty. More than 100 students participate in Student Research Day each year. This year's keynote speaker was Dr. Sylvester James Gates Jr., a noted theoretical physicist researching superstring theory, supergravity, and supersymmetry. I've spent my entire adult life working on the mathematics that's closely associated with string theory. So there are real people who do that stuff. We're just not on TV. Even though that's what I dedicated my direction to when I was uh, even as early as I said, starting at four, all through elementary school, all through high school, all through college, it was science that I wanted to do. At this stage of my life, I find that that burning passion and desire to do science has actually spawned three other careers. Uh, one of those careers is teaching. As I commented a, a moment ago, I've been teaching for 46 consecutive years. Another of my careers is this stuff related to string theory. I've been doing that kind of mathematical physics research for 43 years. In the middle 90s, I showed up in the first si my first science documentary. It's called Break Through the Changing Face of Science. And in, it, was a, it was a collection of six one-hour programs. On each program, uh, 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 four scientists were highlighted. The program that I was in, which was broadcast in 1996, is called The Path of Most Resistance. 2009, I found myself sitting across the table, as you can see in this picture, from a gentleman whose name is Barack Hussein Obama. I was in the White House. I was a part of a group called the U.S. President's Council of Advisors on Science and Technology. The acronym is PCAST, P-C-A-S-T. And I was relaying to President Obama some results from a report that we had written. Whenever PCAS did a report on education, and I have to thank Dr. North for, for bringing me here, whenever PCAS wrote a report on education, I was one of the principal authors. I was one of the people guiding the formation of the report and usually reporting it out uh, to the president. Here again, I'm sitting next to President Obama. This is uh, in the uh, Roosevelt Room, which is uh, pretty close to the Oval Office. Whenever our advisory group had meetings with President Obama, this is the place where we met. Uh, in 2013, I was extraordinarily fortunate. I became the recipient of the National Medal of Science. National Medal of Science, most people never heard of, but you've heard of the National Medal of Honor. So it's roughly the equivalent thing to the National Medal of, of Honor. During the time that I was on the advisory council to the president, I became part of an advisory group, and we looked at many issues in the United States around the issue around how science, technology, engineering, and mathematics impacts economy. Because a lot of people, when they see the word STEM, the letter STEM, they think, oh, that's for professors, that's for scientists, that's for mathematicians, that's for engineers. It has nothing to do with me. And if you think that, I'm hoping to change your mind by the end of this talk. So the most important thing to understand about STEM is that it is not a call for everyone to become a scientist or a mathematician or an engineer. It is a call around the skill sets that those people develop yeah. because the jobs in the future are going to be related far more closely in the future to that skill set than they have been in the past. So nothing in life comes easy and uh, at the end of the day it's a very personal set of decisions about how much pain you're willing to uh, endure <laughs> but if you can take the pain every day that you work hard at your education will be returned to you in the future as money. The, I think the most important message that you can give to a, a young woman or girl or any member of a group that's not traditionally pursued science in, this, uh, in our society mm -hmm. is that at the end of the day, the universe doesn't really care about your gender, about your ethnicity. All it cares about is do you have a mind that is capable of comprehending it? If you feel you have that kind of uh, grace or gift, then I think you ought to pursue it.